we're going to build a, a stereo cabinet enclosure. I currently have one over top of my stereo, and the reason why I got it is because it's out here in the shop, and I don't really have dust collection. It just, I basically let dust go everywhere, and I vacuum it up, and I just wear a mask whenever I'm sanding, doing all that kind of crap. So you got to have a cabinet over it, because you don't want all that dust getting down in, inside your stereo. And uh, right now, the, the, the cabinet that I have is adequate. It works really nice. It's a really nice cabinet. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and put this on eBay when I make my new one. Let somebody else have it. But uh, the reason why I want to upgrade is I want a taller one that's got a shelf in there that I can slide a tablet in. Right now, I'm using my cell phone. I'm going to uh, get me a tablet that I can have the streaming services and that on there, like Pandora, Spotify, and all that for, for listening to the music out here in the shop. It's a, I don't have a CD player anymore. It's hard to find CD players. I've got tons of friggin' heavy metal CDs all over the place, but uh, you can't get a CD player. I bought a 100 disc CD player recently off of eBay, and it was supposed to have worked. Loaded it up, and it jammed up as soon as I hit play. So I took it apart, got my CDs out of it, and uh, then I took a hammer to it, and I just smashed the shit out of it. I was pissed off, and then I got on and I ordered a Bluetooth uh, stereo. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and just build a simple stereo cabinet to enclose this thing out in the shop and keep dust out of it. Let's have a look what I currently have. Alright, this is what I currently got right here. Like I said, it's pretty nice. I'm sure somebody else would like to have it once I'm done using it and get my new one built. Uh, we got a nice hinge system right here. The front lifts up really nice and easy. Seamless joinery along here. You really can't tell that this is two different pieces. Got a nice curve on the back, give it some aesthetics. Uh, custom paint job. But it's not tall enough. I want to build a little shelf in there so we can slide a tablet on top of the stereo and uh, still have plenty of room for airflow. Because you got to have airflow, these things get rather warm. And we've got to have something to keep the dust off of it, like I said, because I don't use dust collection. So, first thing we're going to do, let's cut some plywood. Alright, there. All done. Quick, short video. Pretty nice, isn't it? Oh, speaker upgrade too. Got rid of bookshelf speakers. Got another one over there. These things are extremely loud. Now my neighbor can listen to Pantera at 7 o'clock in the morning. And my neighbor is an eighth of a mile over that way. Uh, Alright, I guess the video isn't done. Maybe we should rewind this and I'll show you just a little bit how I actually made this really quick, simple, cheap stereo cabinet. So let's go ahead and rewind real quick. Afternoon. This is, uh, alright, what's next? Oh, okay, I guess that was too far. Hold on a second. Let me freaking roll this forward just a little bit. All right, I already laid out the top. From this line over, this is going to be your top. Nothing fancy, just a sheet of 5 8 inch plywood. We'll cut a couple of sides on it, make some sides. We'll make a rudimentary box out of it. We're not making this for a customer. We're making it for ourselves, for the shop, so we don't have to get super fancy. Nothing has to be really overly decorative, because anything that we make stupid and ugly looking right now, we will fix with uh, trim board and it'll look pretty freaking nice when we're done. But once again, you're not making it for somebody else, you're making it for yourself. Make it to where you think it looks really nice and decorative. Don't worry about what anybody else's opinion is. Somebody comes in and bitches about it, it's like, oh, oh crap, you didn't use proper dado joints or whatever, throw them out of your shop. So let's get this board cut. Just gonna do a quick uh, butt joint and we're gonna
fire some nails into it with a little bit of wood glue, and then we'll strengthen it up. So let's connect these things. You just gotta take that off and you know, use your finger, get in here and get some glue out. We'll go ahead and just I'll do the other side. Okay, now we got our basic uh, cabinet shape. Like I said, we're not doing fancy joinery, but now we're going to uh, reinforce it. L iron. These will make it strong as shit. No one will ever see it. And there's no reason to get fancy. And once again, if somebody does stick their head inside your stereo cabinet, and go, oh wow, look at that, you don't know what you're doing. Who gives a shit? Throw them out of your shop. You just put one here, there, there, and there. We'll screw these things in. This thing will be strong as shit, and you'll be able to put weight on top of it, do anything you want with it. This is going to be a nice little brick cabinet. And then right on top of these, we will just build a simple little shelf over top of it. All it's going to be is just another piece of plywood that we'll just screw in from the sides and then we can slide a, a laptop or a tablet or whatever we happen to have out here that we're going to use for uh, streaming music. We'll screw this together. And if you're going to use Phillips bits, spend some decent money on Phillips bits. Uh, these are Bosch bits. They're like a dollar fifty a bit, but they are well worth it. You buy cheap ones, all that you do is round off your screws. shelf in here. So let's measure across here, see what its distance is. We're at 29 and a half. Come up here to the top. Not quite 29 and a half. So we want to cut a board at 29 and a half. Here is only about four and a half inches off the surface. That's going to go here. So if we come up roughly four inches, there's going to be plenty of room to put in whatever we want. If we want to slide a laptop in here, we can slide a laptop in here. And there's still going to be a huge amount of freaking airspace in here for airflow. So what we want to do, we're going to cut a wood block. I already got one cut. We're right at four inches. I'll cut another one real quick. All right, so we got two blocks, same height. We're just going to stick them on each side. That's going to locate our shelf. So we take our shelf. Alright, shelf's in place. We'll just fire a couple of nails in here. We'll drill, throw a couple of screws in it. Alright, shelf is basically in place. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and just uh, pre-drill and run some screws into it, make sure it stays good and strong. Alright, there's our basic stereo cabinet. Stereo down here, laptop up here. Now all we gotta do, we'll sander, put a stain on it, and then we can start working on the trim 
and the door in the front. I'm going to do a, just a, a plexiglass door so you can actually see the stereo in there. It's got all kinds of cool lights. But let's do a, a sand on here. All right, it's sanded more than good enough for uh, for our needs. Now we're just going to go ahead and put a quick freaking stain on it. Just Minimax Poly Shades Classic Black. We're going to stain it black. And you just need a little foamy brush. Soak up this shit that's spilled out everywhere. All right, so we got the uh, the basic box built for the stereo cabinet. Now I gotta do some uh, some trim work to hide that ugly end grain on the uh, the plywood. A, you know, I didn't do any real fancy joinery. I had no intention of doing any fancy joinery because it's just gonna be a quick box that I gotta build to cover that radio. So you gotta set your table saw up. We're gonna just make our top strips. We need to cut uh, some boards at a 45 degree angle. I got this DeWalt job site uh, table saw. It's not mine, it's a loaner. Mine's a royal piece of shit. It's out in storage. And it's going to go to the scrap heap. Tired of dealing with it. First thing you got to do is you want to go ahead and adjust the saw. Set it to a 45 degree angle. So you get yourself a digital angle gauge. You set it on the saw. Zero it out. Now it's set to the, uh, the level of the uh, saw's table. And then you place it on your blade. And then you adjust your blade to make sure it's at an exact 45 degree angle. Because you don't want to trust the gauge that's down here. I already went and adjusted this one so it's sitting pretty much perfect at 45. <clears throat> then we can cut the board. You got to set your depth there. I already did that. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to go ahead and go and get me a new saw. I want to get a, 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 con, a cabinet grade table saw. There's a company called Saw Stock that makes them. That's the one that I want to get. It, uh, if you touch this blade while it's spinning, there's a, an electrical current flowing through it. And as soon as you touch it, it senses the uh, your skin. I don't know how the hell it does it. But it will cut power to the saw and it randoms a break up into the blade and will stop everything moving within five milliseconds. You won't even nick your skin if you touch it. That's the one I want to get for that safety feature because when I'm out here, it's not uncommon for me to drink three or four beers an hour. So when you're dealing with a table saw and alcohol, yeah, I'd like to have that safety feature. But let's go ahead and uh, rip a board down and make the first part of our basic trim to cover up the ugliness of my crappy joinery. You're going to use a table saw. One of these little things is called a gripper. It's really nice. It keeps your hands up away from it. You can hold on to the board, push it through. Well, let's set our fence width. We're going to go with uh, an inch and a
All right, I think that's good enough. We're not going to get into any fancy, uh, we're not going to route the edges or anything like that. We'll just soften them up when we sand them. But now we just got to sand, stain, then I got to build the, uh, the door for it on the front and it'll be done. But I think I'm done working on this for today. I have to go fix the sidewalk and I got to go mow and I got to work on uh, a barn floor. I got a bunch of other things I got to go do. I'll get back to this later. All right, so I went ahead and sanded and stained all the trim pieces. Uh, I used a natural cherry Minwax finish. This stuff right here. Now I'll go ahead and we'll glue them and staple them on. I'm just gonna use Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. Uh, all that I got is two inch long uh, finishing nails. I should actually have about an inch and a quarter. That would be a lot better. So there's a good chance when I fire them through, if I miss, I'm gonna have nails sticking out so I have to go through and cut them off. But went ahead and made sure that they were all labeled on where they need to go, top front, top back. That way I know exactly which piece goes on where because this thing probably isn't perfectly square. So let's go ahead and nail them on. Plexiglass to go in there. I was gonna make it a single panel, but uh, my plexiglass isn't big enough because uh, I didn't do a real good job of measuring. This, this cabinet is way bigger than it needed to be made, and I don't know why I made it so freaking big. I just did. So we're gonna go with it. So let's go ahead and start cutting boards, and we'll make up uh, make up a door for it. Exactly twice as thick as the side and top pieces. That way, your 
your 45 will line up. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead, sanded, and stained the front. So it's ready to be attached with the hinges, other than I gotta put the windows in. Also off camera, I went ahead, put recesses in with the chisel for the hinges to go in, put them in on cabinet door as well. That way, put the hinges in, it'll all fit nice and flush. So we'll have to cut some acrylic sheets to fit in here for the windows. Uh, I also got to do a couple of finishing things here on the, uh, the cabinet before we put the, uh, the front on. The entire thing has also been sealed with this water-based Minwax uh, polycrylic clear gloss spray. I did that off camera too because everybody knows how to run a can of spray paint. So the first thing we got to do to finish this off is address the back side of the shelf right here because when you're listening to uh, metal like Pantera and that, you got to listen to it loud so everything vibrates in here. And then you have on this shelf, you can vibrate back, fall off, fall down onto the head unit. So what we need is just a little strip. I made cut a little strip of hardboard. We're going to staple it to the back side of this shelf to keep anything from vibrating and falling off. Uh, the shelf didn't come all the way to the back and the reason for that is because I had a big plywood laying around that was wide enough but it wasn't deep enough. I didn't want to go and cut another full sheet of plywood to go all the way out here because it really didn't matter. So all we're going to do is stick this up in place just like that. I'll shoot a couple of brad nails in here. The whole point of this cabinet is nothing more than just to keep dust off of my radio because I don't have dust collection out here other than uh, a stupid vacuum. Uh, we need to put some sort of covering on here so the dust can't fall down into there. So I grabbed one of my uh, painter's drop claws, cut it to the right dimension, cut some little thin strips in there so the cords and everything can go through, plus you can still get some airflow. And all we're going to do is just staple it up on here, and that'll help keep dust from getting down into the back side of it. Go ahead. So I got my recesses set here for the acrylic. Couple sheets. I don't want to do this. Now to cut acrylic, they do make uh, scoring knives where you can just run along your lines and then you're supposed to just be able to lay it down on a, uh, a sharp edge, push on it and it'll snap on the line. And I've got one, but uh, I have bad luck with it. About, I don't, I'm probably not doing it right, but about friggin' probably 50% of the time I will bust a big chunk out of the acrylic. It doesn't always cut on the uh, score line. Uh, I just use the bandsaw. I just cut it out on the bandsaw. It's quick, easy. Take care of the job. Alright, there's our two windows. Now we just gotta peel the uh, protective uh, film off of them and then we'll nail them in place. This hammer, 
this hammer is probably too big for this job, but it's all I've got. It's either this or a 24 ounce framing hammer. So it's finally time to go ahead and take this nice cabinet, go put it up on eBay so somebody else can have it. trick it'll help keep the dust out of there maybe one of these days I'll get around to doing dust collection but uh, don't forget to go ahead and hit subscribe hit like turn on notifications we'll see you next time